Thunder on the track, superstars of stock cars. The speed, the action, and the death-defying crashes that make up the exciting sport of stock cars are finally captured in this video. Watch as the superstars of the stock cars challenge their competitors in furious wheel-to-wheel -wheel action as they're seen winning some of their greatest races. Included in this action-packed video, Besides all of the smashes and the crashes, our exciting winning moments with the likes of Darrell Waltrip, Richard Petty, Bill Elliott, Harry Gant, Bobby Allison, Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, and Neil Bonnet. All of the action that makes for the excitement of stock car racing is here, with the very best drivers in action. The sport of stock car racing has evolved from the small town rural garages and the moonshine running legends of the backwoods to today's high profile international spectacle of speed and beauty. The old days of dirt tracks have given way to the super racing facilities that exist from coast to coast. The small group of Grease Monkey fans is now a wide cross section of men and women as they thrill to the thunder on the track. The superstars of stock cars have transformed this sport into today's highly popular events. Let's take a look at these superstars of stock cars and relive some of their greatest moments. Richard, you're starting in 14th position. What is your theory regarding qualifying? Well, my theory would be that I'd like to start further up front, but uh, we really don't look at that part of it. We we came to Dover here to try to win a 500-mile race, and we didn't come up here to try to sit on pole. And uh, I think it's proven over a period of years that uh, you know we're more ready for the race than some of the people that do sit on pole. And uh, by, again, uh, our main strategy is try to win a 500-mile race. What will be your strategy in the early part of the race? Will you try to go to the front quickly? Well, I think. Uh, uh, basically, I've got to sort of see how my car is working and how all the competition is working, and uh, then from, figure, from there we'll try to figure a little bit of strategy. Right now, uh, nobody knows how good any particular one car is going to run, and we're going to have to run a little bit to sort of see how everybody's doing.
Richard Petty is the king of stock car racing. Petty's the all-time winningest driver with more than 200 victories and is a seven-time Winston Cup champion. Petty's career has spanned over 30 years and that in itself is an amazing statistic. His STP Pontiac is indelibly etched into the mind of every stock car racing fan. The pride of Randleman, North Carolina, is a true superstar of stock cars. He's raced over 1,100 races, finished in the top five an amazing 55 times. Well, we had all problems all kinds of today, just like everybody else. Uh, you know, getting the thing set up, and you, you think you'd have a hot set up, and then uh, you change, come in and change tires, and you know the combination wouldn't work. So we got lucky there. We've done some figuring along in the middle of the race. We figured how much wedge and stuff we needed, so they done a bunch of stuff the last time we, uh, when we stopped the last time. And when they did that, they made the final adjustment. And we got lucky and it hit. I thought maybe you were pacing yourself, but you evidently had to run hard all day. <laughs> hey, buddy, I, I, drove, I drove easier at last, and I did it first, because then they got everything working. It's when, when the car don't work good, that's the people they have to drive for. Nobody has ever started in 20th place before and come on to win this race. You had to drive hard. Well, you know, it's it, again, like I've said, it don't take make any difference where you start. It's where you end up. And after 500 miles, uh, that much position, if you can't if you can't catch up that much, then need to be running in. Hey, there's another thing. This puts you within two wins of 200. Thought about that? Well, that's better. <laughs> 198 is better than 197. Richard, okay, congratulations. Thank Great race. That's Richard Petty and Victory Lane. Back to you, Ken. Oh, there was a remarkable postscript to the 24th annual Miller High Life 500. You're looking at the scene four and a half hours after the event was completed in the press box at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Just moments ago, Bill Gasway of NASCAR made this announcement. Richard Petty's motor was found to be some 24 cubic inches over the limit. The 355 limit, it came in at 381.983 in measurement. And at the end of the race, left side tires all the way around. That's a big no-no. The penalty, $35,000 fine, a 104-point disallowance, which is the amount of points he picked up, put him right back to where the race began. But the win, number 198, stands. So Petty wins the Miller High Life 500, but he is fined about what he would have earned, plus his points are disallowed. That's the story after the race is over and the inspection is completed here in the garage area at Charlotte. For Donnie Allison, for Charlie Harville, Leslie Calloway, I'm Ken Squire at the 1983 Miller High Life 500. Neil Bonnet, the veteran from Bessemer, Alabama, has survived many obstacles on his way to winning 18 races and earning almost $4 million. Bonnet's 1988 Daytona 500 win highlighted his career as a member of the famed Alabama Gang. His 50% ratio of top 10 finishes in his races is testimony to his consistency on the stock car track. No obstacles get in Bonnet's way, not even extreme heat as in the 82 World 600. A situation where the famed Richard Petty even needed oxygen because he was overcome by fumes. Meanwhile, Neil Bonnet just keeps on chugging the way he's been doing it ever since the 1974 season. This is a man who perseveres. Neil 
did you run as hard as you could all day long? We've been no, uh, normally my racing style here at Charlotte is just wide open and leading the race. The last couple of races here, I'd been leading the thing, fell out once with a wreck and blew the motor up, and Leonard told me before the race if I'd watch that tack all day long and keep the motor in the car, that we'd have a ch chance to win at the end. And I had to just sit there and grip my teeth all day and read that tack and try to keep the car together. And just like he said, I kept it together and they won the race. Bill Elliott, I've got to say, did one heck of a job and was uh, quite a competitor all day long. You had to really run hard the last several laps against Bill Elliott. Yeah, the, uh, my car was real tight. We had uh, loaded the car up for the end of the race. And, you know, like I say, I tried not to run it hard all day, which is hard for me to do, just sit there and ride. And, and it really felt good. Did you have any problems? What's that? The only problems I had was just a little bit warm. Pocono is a different story. This is only the second time I've ever been here, and you know it's a little bit different on getting your car set up. And we've had a few problems on the car, and the rain hasn't helped anything. And I just feel like you know if we get through this race, maybe next time I can run, you know, extremely well. You know, you never know. <laughs> when the race starts, it's a different story. Bill Elliott is another superstar, nearing the unheard of $10 million in earnings level. No matter what the conditions, be it a caution due to rain or any other problem on the track, Elliott uses his experience to maintain an edge. This veteran is always able to avoid problems in situations like this 1984 trouble at Rockingham. Elliott's 32 wins in only 290 races is a phenomenal percentage. Bill excelled in 1985 when he won an amazing 11 Winston Cup races. When others are towed, Elliott's Coors Ford is always one of the most followed on the circuit. He's one of the most consistent performers on the circuit. Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, Georgia, still reigns as a superstar of stock cars. Well, I knew Gant was coming on. It looked like he had a little bit more off the, off the corner on me. And he went up high, and I just drove it on, and the old car just ran on up off the corner. You know, all the guys were good in the pits. The motor ran good, and the car worked super. The last few laps, you were in traffic most of the way. Did you expect this was going to happen, or did you think you were going to get beaten at the end? Well, I really didn't know. I knew Gant. When I was in traffic, Gant was a little bit stronger than I was, but when we were strung out, I was a little bit stronger than he was. And I knew when we got to the traffic, it was going to have to be, I was going to use a little bit of strategy on him to ever get by him. But yet, what he did, I didn't know if I could ever get back under him down there or not, and I was just lucky to do it. A year ago today, you were looking for your first win. Did you expect the success that you've had so far this season? Lord, no. It's been a super year. Bill Elliott, a very happy winner here in Victory Lane at Rockingham. Bobby Allison, the pride of Uinton, Alabama, started his Winston Cup career in 1961 and took home a whopping total of $650 all season. Who would have thought that he developed into a $7 million superstar with an incredible 83 wins and 400 plus top 10 finishes? Allison's 1982 Daytona 500 win highlighted his career. He's finished sixth or better in Winston Cup startings an amazing 13 times since 1970.
despite the threat of life-ending injury. He's the oldest winner still active in stock car racing, having won his first NASCAR race in 1966. When danger lurks, the calm veteran NASCAR drivers pull in and get work done on their car in the pits. While others not so fortunate need work done on themselves from the medical team. Then back on the track and veteran Allison, no matter what the conditions or what the surroundings, continues to head for the checkered flag. In the 1982 Delaware 500, with rain making the track slick, a myriad of accidents and spin-outs, in the caution, Bobby Allison comes home first. Just another day at the office for this outstanding veteran. on the final few left before the rain started. Well, just watch for the rain and uh, stay ahead of them. We had more car than he did, and uh, the die guard crew just did a great job for me today. The car uh, drove beautiful all day long. You didn't have any problems throughout the day? Well, one time we had on a tire that was a little bit out, and uh, it happened to be a period of time when we were under the green, but uh, it did okay. We, we made up for it. You got four tires on your last stop, did you not? Uh, yeah, we did. And you evidently were in good shape from then on up. Yeah, from then on, the guys really took care, uh, paid attention to what size they need to be and everything. They did fine. Harry Gant and the Skull Bandit Oldsmobile are always a distinctive sight on the stock car circuit. With his career nearing the 20-year mark, Gant has won more than $4 million and has 10 NASCAR victories. Despite tough competition all the way around, Gant has finished in the top 10 in over half of his 300 races. The Taylorsville, North Carolina native is one of the sport's greatest late model sportsmen. In 1985, Gant was the International Race of Champions winner. Harry Gant survived a slump in the mid-80s and is now again a superstar of stock cars.
Delaware 500. Harry Gann is living proof that history does repeat itself. For the second straight year, he wins this 500-mile test on this one-mile super speedway. An up-and-down day, Harry. It didn't look like it was going to be your day at the beginning, but you kept in there and pedaling as fast as you could, and it came up for you. Well, it, you know, we had up-and-downs all day, but I knew we could win the race. Other people had to have the same trouble, and, you know, we made up a lap there one time. I was a little disappointed when NASCAR moved us back, but uh, uh, they couldn't nobody beat our car today. I just said, all I got to do is be patient. Travis kept telling me on the radio not to run too hard and blister the tires. So uh, that's what I've done. I just, I just rode easy to win the race. We must be pretty good luck here at Mislu TV. It's the second straight Mislu race for you, too. Yeah, it sure is, you know, and uh, we thank all the people here at Dover. It's a fine racetrack. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of success here. We've always run good and run beautiful today, and I can't thank my crew, the good Lord, for looking after us today and made everything possible, but Travis Carter and the Skull Bandit team and this Chevrolet Monte Carlo done the job today. They didn't, they didn't any Fords from nowhere outrun us today. Ricky Rudd was on the NASCAR circuit nine years before he won his first event in 1983. Uh, we've got a young team here that's coming together real well. Uh, the new Piedmont Airlines uh, racing team, we're running uh, the Pontiac Grand Prix. Uh, they've been working real well for us. We've had a, a lot of bad luck as far as finishing the races go. We've uh, been competitive. We've run in the top five consistently. and. Uh, just seems like uh, a few times we've gotten down close to the end and we've had uh, engine trouble that's plagued us, but I feel like we're getting that sorted out right now and on our way. On our way indeed. Since winning that first race in 1983, Ricky Rudd has won every year since to become a stock car superstar. When veterans have problems going up against the wall and regaining their speed, Rudd is still in there banging away. With 10 wins and a top 10 finish in half of his races, the Chesapeake, Virginia driver is a noted hard charger. at Dover Downs, complete 500 laps and win. You've earned it the hard way, but Ricky, a lot of that weariness goes away when you're sitting in victory lane. Well, when, you, when you're out front like that, a lot of those aches and pains that come on you tend to disappear a little bit, and uh, today really wasn't that physical of a race, and I think a lot of that's because of the new track surface. It's nowhere near as bumpy as it used to be, so uh, they're going to have to have another name instead of the Monster Mile. They're going to have to call it something else, because today the, the surface was good. Goodyear had a good tire force, and our guys did a great job coming up with a winning combination, chassis and motor both. You've been getting closer and closer week in and week out with really out the payoff. Looks like today was the first time in a long time you've had the combination start to finish. Well, it has been a while uh, since we've been up front. You know, last week at Richmond, it looked like things were going to go our way. Then we uh, got caught up with some oil dry and it run through the fence at Richmond. And it looked like it might have been our race last week, but uh, we'll take this week also. Uh, you know, anytime we can come here and, and get a win with the competition today, I think uh, it goes for the team. These guys have worked hard. I just sit behind the wheel and, and turn the wheel and put it in high gear and go. And they've done a great job on the chassis and the motor. Another delightful addition to Victory Lane is his beautiful wife, Linda. And Linda, I don't think a bazooka or an M80 could wipe that smile off your face right now. Well, I hope not. I hope you, they get to see it a whole lot more this year. That was after Rudd won the 1986 Delaware 500. Now in 1989, driving car 26, the green car, the Quaker State car, he's back at it again. This is the unique twisting track at Sears Point, California. And this is where Ricky Rudd captures the Banquet 300. Yes, there's plenty of right turns in this one to go along with the standard lefts of the circular track. And with this victory, Ricky Rudd pushed his earnings up near the $5 million mark. And just think, he's now entering the prime of his career.
one of the fiercest competitors in all of sports, is Dale Earnhardt on the NASCAR circuit. Number three just won't back down and he'll take any opportunity to get ahead. Earnhardt has nearly 40 wins and $10 million in earnings and top 10 finishes in two thirds of his races. Earnhardt's a superstar. He's earned three national championships. The hard-charging veteran from Kannapolis, North Carolina, has won most of the major races, highlighted by an amazing 11 wins in 1987. His 1986 World 600 win in Charlotte highlights a spectacular career that's still setting records. Your team has been running so strong of late. Where's the extra reliability, speed all come from at one time? You know, we kind of, uh, uh, we get beat down a little bit. We're like any good team, whether it's a racing team, football team, baseball team. We know that we have a lot of potential. We know that we have a lot of ability. And when we're not functioning up to what we think is our capabilities, sometimes we sit down with each other and we say, hey guys, what is going on? How can these other guys be beating us the way they are? And we all get together and we re-inspire ourselves and we go to work and uh, the motor people, sometimes they find a little something. We work on the cars extra hard. We find a little something there. And then we just support each other uh, morally and get us all pumped back up and, uh, and that really makes a difference. And we just, we like to race. We look forward to it and uh, I think these other cats kind of go this way and we kind of go this way. Six out of your seven wins have all come in the same car. What do you have here? Same car. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a car. It's two years old, and uh, we had thought about retiring it earlier in the year, and that, I don't mean coming to pits and retire it. I'm talking about retire for, uh, we were thinking about selling it, and uh, I said, you know, maybe we ought to keep this for an ace in the hole, and it's a good thing we did because we've won the last three races with it, so uh, it's a good car, and you just get them that way. I had cars over the years that I really like. I told somebody the other day, I said, this car just loves me, and they said, how in the world could you know that? Well, I just, I just know it. I love Darryl it. It loves Walker me back. has won more money than any driver in motorsports history. His 79 wins and $10 million plus earnings mark him as today's reigning superstar. In 1981 and 82, he won an amazing 12 races each year, an unheard of feat in modern racing. Three times, Waltrip has broken the $1 million mark in winnings for a season. Strong on the short tracks, like here at Martinsville, Virginia in 1989, Waltrip has also excelled on the big tracks, as his big wins at Atlanta and Charlotte testify. You've seen it all now, the superstars of stock cars. The Thunder on the track. The great spectacle of stock car racing. Stock car racing, among the most daring and dangerous of all sports events.
This is Steve Grad saying one of the best things about stock car racing is it gets better and better, providing more excitement for fans throughout the world.